Welcome to the Cooper Associates County Ground for the next in our series of Somerset Masterclasses. Today I've got Somerset spin bowler Max Waller with us, um, not only a spin bowling artist but portrait artist as well. If any of you have seen Max on social media, numerous works of very attractive pets that he's got on there too. But today we're here to talk about spin. Max has played over 130 matches for Somerset, got a similar amount of wickets in T20 cricket. In fact, he's the leading leg spinning wicket taker in the history of the T20 Blast. So today we're going to go through some leg spin bowling but also all of the variations that you would have seen Max during his Somerset appearances. Looking forward to this one. Just when he was firing. Max, thanks for joining us today. T20 cricket is so prevalent in the world of cricket and particularly spin bowling. It's gone from almost step and fetch it in terms of the early stages of T20 cricket with the likes of Jeremy Snape with the moon balls to T20 bowlers and particularly spin bowlers being so important in every franchise league all the way around the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, spin bowling is massive in T20 cricket at the moment, especially people with variation. And variation is the most important thing, I think, in T20 cricket um, because it's unpredictable um, and also a lot of deception through the air and, and through, through delivery itself um, can create problems for batters who are looking to set to hit one area of the field. A spin bowler these days, you're used in a variety of roles, so you have to adjust and adapt depending on what's in front of you. But if we come back to your initial mindset as a spinner, what's you're brought on to bowl at any stage of the game, what's, what's generally in your, in your mind? What are you looking to do? I think I want to take wickets. That's the first and foremost, any spin bowler, I think they're looking to take wickets. I don't think you can go into a game looking to contain. I think um, taking wickets naturally slows the run rate down anyway. Um, so you ask any captain around the world these days in franchise cricket, they'll all look for leg spinners or, or spin bowlers in general as an attacking option rather than a defensive one. So yeah, looking to attack um, and yeah, bowling wicket to wicket, stick to my strengths, know what I'm good at um, yeah, and basically go from there. Let's, let's talk about your strengths a minute. So when the caption comes on in the, in the summer, Max Waller, you've got your, your matches and wickets and generally says leg spinner there, but you know, spin the, the ball both ways, but all sorts of deliveries. Yeah, you? absolutely. I actually bowl with uh, very few leg spinners, which is actually a bit of a, already tripping the batsmen when you, if you're, they're watching at home in the highlights, they'll see the leg spin bowl actually. Um, yeah, lots of googlies, lots of uh, back spinners and, and trying to see the batsmen both ways. Um, uh, yeah, I generally run the ball into the right-handed batsman, so I'm, I'm looking to attack the stumps as much as possible. I think keeping the stumps in play is important. Um, yeah, and so yeah, calling me a leg spinner is, um, is actually quite, quite handy. Well, today we're going to have a, a bit of a look at some of the, the variations and indeed the, the leg spinner that the Max bowls. But uh, yeah, if it's all right with you, let's go and have a, a bit of a look at it. Yeah. First up, I'm going to bowl the leg break. The leg break I'm looking to take away from the right-handed batsman. Um, it should come out with the palm facing the batter, so the seam rotations like that. Um, let's give it a go. So next up I'm going to bowl the googly. The googly is going into the right-handed batsman, trying to cramp him from room and looking to hit the stumps as much as possible. It's going to come out with the palm facing away from the batsman and hopefully come out like that. Spin back in, like an off spinner. So next up is the slider or the back spinner. Um, they're actually two different deliveries. I like to think the back spinner is more like throwing a dart. So the ball comes out, the seam coming down, straight down the wicket, or maybe a little bit wobbly. But um, it's looking to skid onto the batter. Or the slider, which actually is pushed out the front, rather than stop that, it's pushed out the front. So it has the same effect, but probably a little bit quicker. Um, I'll go through those two deliveries now. I'll start with the back spinner. It like runs into the batter, skiddy off the surface. Now this one's the, the slider, which is pushed up the front. But for the slider, you'll see more of the back of my hand. It's pushed up the front rather than the side of the hand or the back of my hand. So this 
is the knuckleball. The knuckleballs can be held lots of different ways in the hand, actually. There's lots of variations to it, but I like to make sure that my fingers are nails are caught in the seam. Um, and then I'm literally looking to release the ball with a little bit of top spin so that it comes out with not much revolutions on it, which actually actually oscillates in the air um, and that's causing the batsman bats problems through the air. Um, generally comes out a little bit slower as well with not, not much on it, so it's quite hard to hit in T20 cricket. I'll show you, give it a go. Max, you could be practicing in the nets and against your, your, your mates, definitely. But there's other ways you can develop spin bowling too. You can be sat on your couch watching neighbours home and away, or perhaps even Hollyoaks 10 years ago, and, and practicing your skills, can't you? Definitely. You grab a ball around the house. So I've got a cricket ball here, and just sit on the sofa and spin balls hand to hand. You can actually learn all the deliveries from sitting down. Um, so yeah, the leg spinner, you're looking to spin the ball across to your left to your left shoulder from your right arm to your left shoulder. That's the leg break. Looks like that. Again, spin really, try and spin as hard as you can when you're doing all these balls, because that's when you get the feel of it. So when you go to bowl with a full action, you're actually giving it a full rip. So yeah, that's the leg break. The googly, again, you can do that same thing. Again, it comes at the back of the hand. And what you're looking to do there is get the, the seam going away from your left shoulder. So it should look like that. You can get it in like that. So that's the back of the hand. Back spinner, again, you're just flicking it to yourself. It's like throwing a dart. That's what you're doing there. You can catch it yourself. Um, Top spinner again, it's the same thing, but just coming over the top. You're, again, you're looking for more bounce and spin. Again, same sort of thing, spin it across your body. Um, and then the knockable, you can just play around with that. You can grip it different ways. You can get your fingers in the seam. Tennis ball, whether it's a tennis ball, you can squish the tennis ball a little bit. You can get it in the air. There's just different ways to play with each delivery. Um, have some fun, try different things, make up a new ball, why not? And there's no limit really to how much you can be, be using that, isn't it? So for example, if you know, we'll go to 10 years into the future, the end of your career, you're, you're on I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, that could be your luxury item. You're so <laughs> attuned to that, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah, it's like, one, it's like the end of my arm now, so I keep all my hands as much as I can. Okay, Max, you've, you've utilised it in various different roles for Somerset and T20 cricket, uh, bowling the first over on numerous occasions in the middle, but uh, I haven't seen you at the, the death too many times, you've been dodging that uh, role, haven't you? Yeah, when 17th over comes, I'm usually trying to hide somewhere on the boundary, so uh, Lewis doesn't spot me, but um, yeah, no, it can happen, but um, very rarely, yeah. But let's talk a little bit about those, those prominent roles you have been playing. How, how do your tactics, and also what balls you're bowling, differ from the different stages of the game? So, for example, if you're bowling in the power play, what's, what's the difference in terms of your objectives and plans as if you're bowling in the middle? Yeah, so usually bowling the first over in T20, um, for some that I've done for the last few years, and actually um, I really enjoy it. I like getting into the game early, um, and yeah, and being in the game early is important for me to just get a feel of the game, how it's going, and, and getting to first look at the batters and the surface. Um, generally the batters are a bit more cautious early on, the first, first over the game, they're looking to see what the ball's doing, and because I've bowled so many variations, actually an advantage to me, they don't really get set, um, so the second over then becomes a bit of a first over as well for the opposition. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to bowl my best ball as often as possible, um, whether that's a backspin or a googly, and looking to hit stumps as much as I can. Um, and yeah, yeah, take it from there, really. And then when you do go into those middle overs, transitioning into them, how does your, your plan differ? So you bowl that first over, trying to sneak out of that, maybe burgle a wicket, but get out as fewer runs as possible, and make it a 19 over game. When we get past the power play, what's your, your plans and tactics then? That depends on the situation, and obviously the, the size of the boundaries. Sometimes it's bigger one side. So I'm looking to be smart in the fact of what side I'm trying to get hit on the ground. Um, generally, be a bit more attacking with the way I bowl. Um, a few more variations in, in past the power play, because um, I've got more fielders out, a bit more protection. Um, so I can attack with the ball because I've got a defensive field. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to vary a little bit more of the new batters in. Again, look to take pace off because, um, well, again, depending on the size of the ground and stuff, but it can be a bit more aggressive um, by taking pace off the ball. Uh, and if the batsman's set, obviously you're looking to try and get him off strike and try and bowl at the new batter. Yeah, certainly the, the 10 minutes we've set aside for this masterclass is nearly enough time to talk about all the aspects of spin bowling. But you mentioned that the field there on a couple of occasions. How important is it for spinners? First, we'll get the, the right men in the right places. So, for example, you want Tom Abel in your prominent positions because we know that he's the, the best fielder in the club. I might have a little bit of a banter about that <laughs> at a so. later stage. <laughs> but also ensuring that, that the right fielders are in the, the, the proper dimensions of the ground, having a deep mid wicket, a deep square leg, for example. Absolutely, yeah. Straight away, I'm getting the tallest guy, Craig Overton, out on the long arm boundary, trying to cover that boundary. Um, 
especially if it's a short side. And uh, yeah, Tom Lambie or Abel out there is quick on the boundary to look and stay the two at deep mid wicket. So yeah, that's really important. Um, and saying, uh, yeah, this is every game look to do. It just shows, doesn't it? You have all the variations, but you still need to be tactically astute enough to get the right people in the right places. Absolutely, you have the best chance. Speaking of variations, we've seen kind of numerous different deliveries from you in the past. I always seem to remember as well, a, a bouncer that Craig Overton would have been happy to, to get rid of uh, Phil Salt at some stage. Do you recall that? <laughs> uh, it was Adam Salter. Adam Salter. Adam Salter. Andrew, Andrew Salter. Andrew Salter. Andrew Salter. <laughs> Andrew Salter, yeah. Glamorgan, I told Steve Davis I'm going to buy a short one because it was a big leg side boundary. I already had a, a couple of Craig Overton catches down at David Wicket, so um, I knew it was big leg side and I thought it was sort of like chest high, waist high. Or well, chest tight, it was more waist tight, but bounce and clothed it out to deep mid wicket. So that was, yeah, just a variation again, pace on the ball, a bit of a surprise delivery, and that's always useful in T20 cricket when a batter's trying to set themselves for something well, that's predictable when actually it's not. Yeah, and ensuring for you that you're not predictable, I guess that's another weapon in your armoury. You can have all the, the balls under the sun, the kind of the backspin of the zooter, the, uh, the knuckleball, the googly, etc. But making sure that the batter can't line you up, that's, that's crucial isn't it? Absolutely, you've, you've seen in T20 cricket as it's gone on, the fast bowlers generally bowling slower balls, slower balls to get it, and the, the spinners generally bowling quicker, so um, there's a bit of mixing going on, but yeah, definitely being as, as, as well, having many variations as possible and being as awkward as possible to face, because that is like something they, they can get used to and then get set on, so changing the pace is, is important as well as changing the delivery.